All right, Dr. Moon, thank you so much for joining us. Congratulations on the mission yesterday. Thank you so much. It was a wild ride. I mean, I have to ask you this, right? You, you were obviously uh, in charge of this, uh, I should say, landing, as we say, and I'm not going to get too technical in it. But um, what was going through your mind? You know, because you're also commentating it, or you're the one who was basically saying, you know, it's it's reached this part or this this zone, I guess, and now now it's it's landing. What was going through your mind then? So I had the privilege of being the mission commentator. I was just one of the many entry, descent, and landing team members across the whole mission who worked so hard to bring perseverance to the surface of Mars. While I was actually doing the play-by-play, -play, I have to admit I was so focused on what I needed to do that uh, it didn't really sink in what had happened until after I had made the touchdown call and I heard the cheers. Uh, a few, it was a few seconds or a few minutes where I was still sitting in my seat and then I was like, wait, we actually landed. And that's when I, I had enough wherewithal to, to stand up and start celebrating with everybody. So, and we obviously saw that, that live. And then the other question that I went through, you know, a lot of people's mind was, you know, I mean, was there an element of, you know, what if this fails? Like, were you prepared to, you know, you know, for that eventuality also? Absolutely. We spend so much of our time doing everything we can to make sure Perseverance would land successfully. And a lot of that is planning for scenarios when things don't go as smoothly as we want. So we had, uh, I had, you know, sheets out underneath my monitor of flowcharts of what we were supposed to do and what we were supposed to say if this thing didn't go right or that thing didn't go right or what, how it needed to, to work to make sure that we really understood what was happening before we made a, a call and gave the team enough chance to, to figure out what, what was going on. So there was so many scenarios that could have happened. I was super thrilled to get to touchdown, be able to take all of those bad scenarios and, and throw them in the trash afterwards. Did you sleep at all last night? I mean, was there a celebration? We did have a little celebration. I tried to go to sleep early, um, but I ended up getting up at around 4.30 this morning because my body's been trained for being on first shift time for the past uh, about two weeks. So I just naturally got up at the same time as it's been reporting for duty for the past two weeks. So hopefully it will be able to relax a little bit more in the coming days. Well, again, I have to say congratulations. Now, you know, uh, we've read a lot about the mission, but if, you know, just want to hear from you, what is the mission? Because, you know, some people have said it could live on the Mars, it could live on Mars for 14 years, right? Mm -hmm. The rover itself. But then there were reports about that it is only scheduled to be there or do work for next two years. Can you tell us more about the mission? So the mission Perseverance is designed to last for one and a half Mars years, which is about two Earth years. Mm -hmm. So we design the science objectives for Perseverance in terms of uh, what instruments she needs to carry, what measurements she needs to take, how many places she needs to go to collect samples, how many samples we need to take. We design that for what we call a prime mission and design how long that prime mission needs to last. And this influences a lot of the design of Perseverance in terms of uh, how rugged her wheels need to be, how um, many redundancies that she needs to have in order to last the one and a half years, how long each uh, piece of hardware needs to be qualified to to last that time. Now, because we design it to last that long, we design it to, to last that long for a wide variety of scenarios, just like for entry, descent, and landing. You know, there's a lot of things that, that could go wrong, and you want to make that the, sure that the design is robust to all those, those different aspects. So what happens sometimes is when you have a scenario where you end up walking that the middle of the line uh, and everything is kind of in that sweet spot, you have all this leftover margin. So you just, you can use it. And that's how we uh, end up having extended missions to for our different rovers and, and missions. Uh, and I'm sure the, the scientists are already eyeing or planning what they would want to do in an extended mission. Uh, I also read something, uh, you know, about collecting uh, samples from Mars and there's going to be, you know, an extended uh, 
program to get, get those samples back from Mars. Uh, are you involved with that planning and execution as well? I am not involved in the execution of the Mars sample return program as a whole. Perseverance is the first step of Mars sample return. So it was super critical that the landing be a success because it's only once she gets to the ground that she can actually collect these samples. And without the samples, there's nothing to return back to Earth. So the, the next few missions that are geared at going back to Jezero Crater in order to pick up these samples, to collect the samples from orbit um, after a rocket has fired from the ground to get them back up into space and then bring them back. None of those could be set into motion until we got to the ground safely. Okay, and again, the big feat, you know, especially, you know, what I'm gonna probably, probably bring up a, a topic from India, you know, India tried their moon mission, uh, I think it was a couple of years ago, and they failed at the landing. Um, you know, any pointers for, you know, the scientists at ISRO who are watching this right now? <laughs> I, I would not deign to give pointers. I mean, the and landing on another planetary body is always a challenge. And landing on one doesn't necessarily mean you know how to land on another. Each planetary body, each landing site, each specific combination of things that has to happen for that date, that time, that piece of hardware that's going to that body, you know, all of those play a role and play a factor in uh, figuring out how you need to do it for that particular circumstance. So it's never easy and it's always super complicated and there's so many things that have to happen in perfect unison in order to get uh, to the surface safely. Okay, all right, now let's talk about, you know, the resort of interest also about, you know, and I'm again seeing this again, uh, on Twitter, I'm not sure if you followed that or not, but there was a lot of talk about your bindi. You know, I'm yes. not sure if you've seen that or not. Uh, tell us about your upbringing. You know, a lot of interest in there too. Like, you know, people uh, what I've read online is you you were you were born in India, but you moved to America when you were a year old. And mm -hmm. tell us about that. And you lived in Washington D.C. area. I did. I lived uh, originally in Pennsylvania, and then spent most of my uh, K through 12 schooling outside Washington D.C. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then, you know, what, what was that, uh, you know, like, you know, I mean, the, the question I'm going to get to is, you know, how much of your upbringing has helped you in, in this role, especially in critical mission like this? Has that had any role to play in, you know, in what you've become now? You know, we had, uh, even though we emigrated to the U.S. when I was uh, very little, my parents and my family still hold to a lot of the the core values that come from our heritage and what they were raised with. And one of those key values is education. And because of that, they were always super supportive of uh, anything that I wanted to do or learn or try to achieve. And a, a large portion is having their support and their willingness um, in, you know, letting me do internships while I was still in high school or, or having the means to, to send me to uh, whatever school I got admission into without having to, uh, to worry about the financials. You know, the little things that they encouraged and supported and were always there to say, yes, you can do it. You know, if you want to, you just have to try hard enough and you can. And that was a, a large part of, you know, helping me to keep moving to the next step and to the next goal and um, to not lose faith and to not give up. Okay, and two last questions uh, here, Dr. Mohan. You know, um, you, your, your story you know, is a very big success story, right? I mean, it, it's all about, you know, a kid who watched Star Trek and wanted to get into this. Um, what would you tell to all those young people out there right now, you know, watching this interview? I would say to persevere and to follow your passion. You know, it, it's not any one accomplishment or one uh, experience that makes or breaks you or uh, defines you as a person, but rather every experience, whether it's a success or a failure or a setback, you know, what you learn from it is the most important and how you take that experience to keep moving, to keep taking that next step forward so that you can eventually get to where you want to go and to not give up. 
Okay, and one last question. How's the reaction back home? I understand you have an extended family in India. I mean, you want to say anything in your, if you can speak the local language there, you know. Um, I declined to do that. <laughs> it's a little, I'm a little too tired to, to try <laughs> to do that on the fly, sorry. <laughs> but um, how has the reaction been though? Back home? Like the, the reaction has been overwhelming. I mean, I had uh, put, you know, my phones down on the floor during the, the landing itself because I wanted to make sure I was fully focused. And by the time I got around to seeing them, there were just hundreds of well wishes and thank yous and, and congratulations pouring in from all over. You know, it, it's just been so overwhelming to, uh, to feel that much, uh, you know, support and, and congratulations from people all over the world. All right, thank you so much, Dr. Moon. And thanks for making everybody proud. Thanks for making the world proud. We'll look, you know, to the future. Probably we'll have more opportunity to talk to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Fikr Aapki, Somvar Se Shukrwar, Rat 9 Baje, Sirf TV9 Bharat Varsh Par.